In this video, I'll show you how to submit your solutions on HackerRank. So I have two contests here. So this is one example contest. This is what I'll show you today. Um, the challenges are here. So there is just one challenge, which is loops. See, the timer starts as soon as you click on this link for this specific challenge. Um, that is when the timer starts, and it starts counting how long you're going to take to solve this problem. So let me start the timer now by clicking. It starts the timer. So here is the problem description. Task, the provided code stub reads an integer n from standard input for all non-negative integers i less than n print i square. Example, if n is equal to 3, the list of non-negative integers that are less than 3, less than n equal to 3, is 0, 1, 2. So print the square of each number on a separate line. So 0 times 0, 0, 1 times 1, 1, 2 times 2, 4. So because we are printing out the square of every number, which turns out to be 0, 1, 4. So the input format, the first and the only line contains the integer n. So they are only going to give you one number, which is n. And the constraints are uh, n is less than 20. And the output format, n, print n lines, one corresponding to each i. If the input is 5, then the output is 0 times 0, 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4. And of course, it's not including 5. So you have to put your answer in this block. This is your code block. Now you are allowed to choose whichever programming language that you want to choose um, to solve your problem. So I'm going to choose Python 3 because that is what I have been teaching you folks. So let's start. What do you do? They've already given you one line that is going to grab the n from the input. And we assume that it's an integer, right? So we are now going to put our solution here. So you want to put a range here, 0 through n. And then you just have to print i star i. That's about it. So that should be your solution for this problem. So before you submit your code, just run your code and see if it works. So it's saying, congratulations, you pass a sample test case and the input is 5, and the output turns out to be whatever they're expecting. However, if you had gotten your answer wrong, say for example, then it will tell you that the test case failed. You have this red checkbox which says that it failed. Your code did not pass this test case because we have to include 0 also. So if the input is 5, then 0 is also one of the outputs. They also show you how it is different. This is your output, and this is the expected output. So you'll, uh, you will notice that 0 is missing here. So the correct answer for this particular solution is including 0. So if you now run the code, again, you will see that it passes. Okay. So once you're thoroughly comfortable, then you can submit your code. And again, remember, the, uh, the counter is already counting how long you're taking to solve this problem. And then you can also run some uh, some of the other test cases as well. So because the constraint is your code should work anything between 1 to 20, that is what the constraints are. So you can put the two edge cases and check and see if it is still running. Um, so yeah, it ran. But obviously, this test case is not there. So that's why it's not telling you whether the tests are passing or not, because they didn't write a test case for one. Now, if you run for 20, just to ensure that it is going to work for 20 also, because that is what the constraints are, and that is also running. It seems to be fine. Uh, again, there is no test case. They have not written a test case for 20 either. They've only written one test case, and that is for 5. So that is why you can't really know whether you got the correct answer or not, but you can check it manually yourself and see if it is correct. And then once you're satisfied with your solution, you can go ahead and submit your code. And of course, it will ask you, are you sure you want to submit this code? If you are comfortable, just go ahead and submit. When you submit, it actually runs against other test cases too. 
they have a few other test cases typically that they will run that against although for this problem they don't seem to have more than one and then finally your code is accepted um, so if you click on the leaderboard so here it's saying sorry we require a few more submissions before we generate the leaderboard since i'm the only person who has taken this challenge at this point it's not showing but once you all take the exact same example and turn in your solutions then you will see the leaderboard here i hope this helps you guys to get ready for the real challenge good luck guys